Welcome to another edition of Totally Awesome Fishing. We're today we're on the Lower Hampshire Avon on what's known as the Royalty Fishery, more famous for barbel and chub fishing in the summer and the autumn. But I'm going to try pike fishing because I love the river pike fishing. They just bite so much harder than the still water ones. Now this has a reputation of having a big fish water here. Uh, they've had 20 pounders out this year. They've had, I think, the record something like, well it's massive, it's something like 37 pounds. I've never even seen a pike that big. Probably won't either in my lifetime. But I've come down, I want to try a different technique, because the other guys normally fish this river, uh, big baits, you know, herrings and, and large baits. I'm going to stick with my small sprats, which I love twitching and bouncing along, and see if I can't uh, find a few fish. It's, it's, it's up and it's pushing a little bit. I had a little bit of duff information from the, uh, from the local, and he said uh, it's low and it's clear, and I drive 80 miles, uh, it's up, coloured and pushing. So... Who knows, we might get lucky, it's going to be tough, it's, it's definitely going to be tough. But beautiful setting, there's a huge storm coming in, they're supposed to give us 100 mile an hour winds tonight, but look at it, who knows, the lull before the storm. Blue sky, breeze is picking up now, I've got to crack three or four hard hours in, see what I can catch, fingers crossed we get lucky. So when you're fishing in the summer, you can actually see all the different features, you know, visually with your polarizing glasses. In the winter, winter fishing, not quite so easy. You've got to look for overhanging trees. You've got to look for little bits of rafts of rubbish where the pike might be laying underneath. And you've got to look for side streams over there. There's a side stream coming in, which was always a good spot for pike anyway, but traditionally, there might be some small fish around there. Uh, they'll be hanging around, a pike will be hanging around and a slack, there's a nice slack below me in the river, anything that slows the pace. The pike don't really like being in that really fast water, they don't like that. They will go in it if there's a lot of feed in there and uh, prey fish, but generally they, they like it a little bit slower. And I've got to stretch here from here, about above the pike bridge up to the weir, it slows up a bit. And I'm going to be using the sprat like this. And the important thing is, don't overcast, you know, because you can cast these off. I've got a, a single carp hook at the front and I've got those VB doubles at the back. Just a single and a double, so real easy to get out of fish. No tangles, easily in the net, you know, you, you can get them out. Cast out, and in a river, keep your rod top high, like that. Let it sink, you want it about a third down. I mean, I'll be in trouble today because it's coloured. I want to get down, but I don't want to get in the weed. And just gently, gently, just twitch it back with the rod held really high, and you're just watching that bow in the line. You'll feel the pike take, it's like a bump. I can't describe it, it's like a bump, but it's not very often a vicious take, you know, it's a, it's a sort of bump, and then as soon as you get it, drop the rod top, open the bail arm, so they don't feel any resistance, then whenever you think you're ready to strike, wind down and strike. Don't leave them too long, I don't lose many fish on these doubles, they're good. I just had a take. I've moved right upstream. I'm just trying to beat this weather. It looks fabulous out there. Blue sky. Just going to let this one eat a little, little bit. He's right underneath me. Wind down. <laughs> he's on. He's on. He doesn't feel very big, but he's on. Tangled up in there with some weed, not very big, but there you go, royalty pike number one. Can't nice get a big one though. Yeah. Where are those hooks? They are the ones on the outside, and one is just absolutely hanging there. 
I love these VB hooks. Watch. Out. That's how easy. That's how easy that is, he said, nearly getting a nip. There you go. First river pike from the royalty. Took me about 35, 40 minutes, and I can feel the meat on this one. I can actually feel that it's it's hard, you know, it's a, it's a river pike. You can see, nice set of teeth. Very, very slippery and slimy, this one, I have to say that. But, there what he goes, five pounds, something like that. Anyway, it's a river pike for the royalty. Let's get back out there and get another one. Now, here's another tip. As well as looking for those sort of surface features, you can tell by the current, a nice line of bubbles gives you the main flow. That tells you where the main push of the current is, and the pike are going to be either side of that. But also, when it's pushing and it's up and rising, so it's against me, it's going to be tough today, you get these sort of boiling rises that come up where it's pushed upwards, and it can either be a big weed bed or it can be a big boulder on the bottom. They're both features, so it looks unfishy. You want to put your bait just either side of those swirls, upstream on either side, and let it come down the side of it. There could be a pike just laying up underneath, as he sees it comes past and that fast cunt, whoosh, bang, it'll grab it. Well, let me show you some classic spots here, which ordinarily you'd probably walk straight past, you'd be casting out over there, probably towards that sort of weed edge there, because they can lay up under that, fish get up underneath it. But don't neglect the inside of the margins, because up here some real, real classic margin fishing for pike. All along the edge of the bank there, are overhangs just sticking out little clumps and that well they might be floating they're not necessarily rooted there because the bank is actually about five feet to the right the actual physical bank and where it's been summer that stuff's been growing out but it's obviously the roots haven't reached the bottom the pike will lay underneath that so don't neglect going up to those and just dropping a sprat right down the edge twitching it past because very often you get a pike right in close now i would say you got just as good a chance fishing down here in the margins trying to get a big double figure fish out as you have casting across the river so it's always tempting to work that side but don't neglect the inside at all you can drop it right down the holes and just bounce it up and down leaving it in the one spot and when you see one come up and grab it whew, that's exciting Well, I'm down by the road bridge now. So noisy. Can't believe how loud traffic is till you get close to it. Anyway, that, I want to use the word twat, I think that's polite enough. They told me to drive 85 miles because the river's low and gin clear, and it's completely wrong. It's up, pushing, coloured, weed. Anybody who knows a rising river is not good, especially for pike. So I've got that one five pounder. I'm just gonna see the last little bit off before the rain comes. But you've had some tips there on finding some of the spots on river, how to, look for marks and features to find those pike but you can have some fantastic sport when you get it right so what we do is we go home get tucked up in the wall and i'll show you how i make up these traces which i don't think you'll buy anywhere i make them up myself that are so successful i've done me what 56 pike in four trips 
can't be bad, can it? Let's get home in the wall. You're not going to believe this, guys. I've actually put the gear in the car. Started raining. A little bit miffed. I thought we'd go home and do some traces. But then I walked right below the road bridge just for something to do. It's stopping the rain. And I've got a good double. I can't tell you. <laughs> Lucky or what? Let's take a look at it. I had another guy come up, but I've got it staked out my landing. I had to go half a mile back to the car, get the video. Otherwise, you guys, would you ever believe me? Well, you should do. I've caught enough now. Nice fish. And, a, and a, I think it was a Polish lure fisherman just came up and said he'd keep an eye on the net for me. And he's just had a follow on a lure. I told him to cast out, and he said a massive fish around 20s followed him in. I just rammed the landing net hand into the bank and went half a mile hoping it was going to... Stay in. Oh yeah, nice fish. Nice fish. Oh yeah. That's a good one. That is a good one. Oh, what? Lucky, lucky God almighty. The kid comes good again. I'll tell you what, I forgot to bring the scales and I should have done. This one does have a gut on it. Let's get it out for you. Whoa, steady. I got a brilliant scrap out of it. It's a shame we didn't have the camera going. Come on. Come here, let me pick him up properly. God, man, what a result. Look at this one, guys. Look at this one. <laughs> oh, I like it, I like it. What do you think? He eats sprats, doesn't he? I think he eats ducks and swans, this one. Beautiful fish, gave me a, a magnificent scrap. I think he's going, I don't know, what do you guys reckon? 14s plus, certainly 14. Look at the tail markings on there. I'll just show you if I can. Beautiful tail markings like lovely black stripes on it that is oh it's heavy let me get a different hole there that is totally awesome fishing from the royalty fishery and as my saying goes do you know what i'm not going home yet but i will show you how to do those pike traces later on and that polish guy missed that 20 pounder i'm going to try it on my sprats he might eat it lovely fish Oh, 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 lucky puller does it again. Might be so lucky if I fall in. We're like, oh Christ, that's deep there. Oh, look at that fish again. I'm going to slide it straight back in. It's all recovered, it's been in the net. Definitely. I'll say right around the 15 to that one. It's got plenty to it. Oh, oh God, man, just gone. Straight away. Brilliant. A1. Quick, 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 guys. I've just cast out, I think the big one's got it. I haven't even struck him yet. Oh, I've done, come on. Yes, fish on, fish on. Oh, fish on. I'll put my jacket on to go home. Oh, that's a good one. I've got to feed us another double. Oh, no. I was all wrapped up. I thought, I thought I'd take one more cast. I just have one more cast. <laughs> Let's get the camera on here. Yeah. Well, he's not a double. I don't think he's a double. Nice, there he is. Nice fish. He'll do. Go again. I think the landing net's broken as well. There's the hook, that's how quick it comes out. Straight away. Another pike, not that big one, but like two in two cast. Who can grumble at that? And I'm still not going home. Whoa, back in the wall at last, but I tell you what, I was really pleased to get that big pike. So that's pretty good. So I'm back here, back at home. I said I'd show you how to make those um, pike traces out that I'm having, I have to say, huge success with. I think it's 50, 59 pike in five trips. Don't tell me it doesn't work. I know it works. I've used it for years. So there's a sort of normal tackle box you get like, right? Okay, that's good. We've all got those. Fold it up, throw it away. You know, I go pike fishing, so that's nearly 60 pike I've had. My traces are in there, my shot's in there. 
that's all I use. Let me show you how I make these traces. Okay, so I've already snipped, cut off a piece of this 40 pound stainless wire. If the ends of it are frayed, just get your fingers, just gently roll the cables back together. Take your barrel swivel, go through the eye of the barrel swivel, leave about an inch, and just do, how simple is this? An overhand knot. Now you can use crimps, but to be honest, it's just not worth it. Use your forceps, take the, what we call the tag end, and just tug it down, do a second turn on it, second overhand knot, this will never, never pull out. Pull it tight. Now I just do this to straighten the circle of the uh, direction of the pull out. I just tweak it once. Now, here's the important bit. To finish that end off, just snip your forceps onto the end of it. Lock it tight. Start a little pinch there. You can see I just pinch it so it's level. And then, whether you can see this, you just hold the barrel swivel like that and then you, you spin those forceps round and around like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, however many turns you want. You spun it right round, undo them, and then you're left with a little tag end there. Just on the end. Just get the tag end. Now, I've got a Jack Russell and I don't want the wire in his paws, so I snip it and I'm holding it at the same time. And there you are. That's the barrel swivel on there. And we do the same thing with the hooks. Okay, get the other end of the cable, get your single carp hook, which is about a, a size two carp hook there. Get your single hook there, put this on first. This is the one that's gonna go through the, the front jaw, as it were, of the sprat. And I pull about five, four inches, we'll say there. I'm gonna do the same overhand knot on that one with the wire. And just pinch it down once. Now, to test that, that's not going to slip the direction of the pull. Put your forceps in there. And I can pull as hard as I like. It's never going to slip out, so I don't do two knots there. Okay, now I then take this VB, this special VB double. As you can see, a small single, large single. And it's called a Vic Bellas, was the guy that invented it, I think, a pike angler. And they're really good. I used to use trebles a lot. I used these for years and years and years. And to be honest, I just don't use trebles now. They're such a pain to get out of the net. Thread it through the eye. Now, you, here's the important part. This one's going in here. It's going in the front of the sprat. And I want the other one about no more than two inches. So I put a little kink in it, just there, in the wire. And then I know exactly where it is to go at the back of the, of the, of the bait. Fold over. Do your knot, get your forceps, give it a tweak. Now I put two turns in this one this time because it's on the lower end. Round again, two turns, get the tag in, put it tight, just readjust those forceps and then I'm going to do that spinning business. Just pinch it, say the first turn, so it's lined up, ready to work its way all down the shank. And then I'm going to spin these forceps and wrap it up nice and neat. That is it. That is it done. I just coil these up. I make up half a dozen. I put a turn in there. I put them in there with some shot. Away I go pipe fishing. So how easy and simple is that? Give these a try. They are totally awesome. Next time you go pipe fishing, I'll tell you what. I'm pretty sure you'll find they're easy to get the hook out. Good luck with it.